Lars, you go. Mm -hmm. uh, just a reminder to ask you a question either in um, Turkish, English, uh, Spanish, or Italian, please. Go. Some hands again, please, guys. We'll start there at the bottom. Have we got the microphone? Just with John, please. Hi, Kevin. Uh, John Murray from the BBC. You've been at Manchester City for, for such a long time now and been a, a part of it, been a part of this, this uh, you know, attempt to win the Champions League. And, and now, when it's so close, what would be obviously so momentous for the club? Just give us a few thoughts and, and how everyone's feeling about it. Uh, evening. Um, yeah, I've been here a long time. Um, you know, uh, it's, for me, it's been incredible. You know, the eight years that I've been here, um, had lots of uh, high moments. Obviously, um, we've been competing in this competition, but we've not been able to win it yet. And this is probably the only little remark that people can give us. But I feel we've been consistent. We've been good in this competition. And yeah, we just need to find a way to, to win the first one. But... Yeah, if we would be able to do that, that would be obviously um, immense for the players, for the club, um, for the fans. Uh, would obviously be something amazing. Arlen Sadiko, Art Motion, Kosovo. Uh, Coach Inzaghi said that uh, Manchester City is one of the best teams in Europe. And uh, you are the favourites to win tomorrow. Uh, but what that X factor has Manchester City to be one of the best uh, teams in Europe because you will play 11 versus 11 tomorrow. Well, thank you to the coach anyway. I think we, we work really hard to, to perform at the best we, we can do. And, um, you know, uh, we've been able to win a lot of um, games and trophies domestically. And... Um, I think everybody knows in this room uh, how we play, how we set up as a team offensively and defensively. And, um, you know, we're just going to try and do the same tomorrow. Hi, Kevin. Simon Bykowski, Manchester Evening News. Um, obviously, there are challenges every season, but given the effort and the disruption of the World Cup in the middle of the season, how satisfying is it for you and the squad that you, you sat here one game from a treble? Well, um, yeah, okay, the disruption is what it is. It's a little bit weird in a, in a way, but um, in another kind of feeling, it's, it wasn't weird at all, you know, because you come back from the World Cup and you just go on with it. Obviously, everybody has a different feeling towards it. But, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm very proud and happy with what we've achieved as a team. You know, it's been amazing whatever we've done and um, we want to do the next step tomorrow to make it even more incredible. That's the only thing I can really say. You know, we've done really good as a team and uh, a lot of the players have been, been incredible. So i um, very happy. Hi, Kevin. I'm Jens from the Norwegian newspaper VG. You talked a lot about your chemistry with Erling, but uh, was it love at first sight when you met in the summer? No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, I think so, you know. Um, I, I don't know, it's something that I don't really can explain. And sometimes you, you have a, a feeling with a player and you understand what he wants and he understands what, 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 I, what I want or what I can do. Um, but yeah, it just clicked really well. And obviously he started scoring at an incredible rate and that helps and that settled him uh, really easy in the team but they've done it the whole year and even you know in the last games it's been really important for us in different ways so um, yeah hopefully he can do what he needs to do tomorrow Kevin Emiliano TNT Sports Mexico here how are you Rodri said to me on Tuesday that um, you will need a lot, a lot of patience tomorrow uh, do you see it the same way what kind of match do you imagine well, I think uh, we understand what Inter is, you know, they're very compact, very 
very good side who play with a 5-3-2 normally, you know, and they always play that system under that coach. The two strikers, they hold the ball up really well and then they have a lot of runners from midfield and fullback. So, you know, we, we understand what they are as a team and they defend incredibly well. Um, so we don't expect it to be an open game. I don't think that happens a lot in the finals anyway. So um, I think we have to understand not to get too nervous too quickly. And, you know, maybe there won't be a lot of chances in the beginning. But, you know, we have to try and play the way that we, we do and be comfortable with, um, with our play in the game. And then uh, hopefully we'll find openings and uh, start to create chances and score some goals. Hi Kevin, I'm Zlatan Marti from Hungary, I'm here. Yes, how do you see the tactical side of the Inter? Because they are generally playing in a three central back system, which can be a five defender system in the defending situations. How hard exercise to the Manchester City to play this kind of style? Because this can be a little unusual. Well, to be honest, I think um, in the last five, six years that I've played in the Premier League, I think uh, a lot of the lower teams are, are playing with a five. At, um, maybe more 5-4-1 for formation, uh, but they do it with two strikers, what makes it maybe a little bit more different uh, what we used to. Um, but, you know, I think the, the advantage that Inter has at that record in comparison to, to teams in, in England, maybe they play this all the time. They know exactly what they do, they know the system in and out, the players know their roles, so, and they're very good at it, so it's, it's obviously going to be hard. Alamin Kerr here. What's winning the Champions League mean for City? Is it a dream or is it an obsession, as someone described it? Um, maybe both, you know, depends who you ask. Um, I think everybody, every professional player wants to win the Champions League and wants to be at the top with their teams um, and also individually. So if you can win the Champions League, you've reached uh, one of the biggest things you can do as a player and um, as a team. So um, to be able to compete um, year in, year out in this competition is amazing because I've, I've been able to compete against the best players in the world and the best teams. And, um, you know, um, tomorrow we've got a chance to, to close that if we, if we are good enough. Hi, Gavin. Here, Mikel Agut from Rugby in Barcelona. Um, you were talking before uh, about your eight years in the club. You played the semi-final against Real Madrid, the final against Chelsea you lost, and then that's the final tomorrow. Do you feel something different? I, I mean, you and the whole team, this time is the time, your time. Do you feel something different? Well, that's a question I can answer you tomorrow. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, you know, we lost two years ago. It's, it happens, you know. We, didn't, we were not good enough at the day and you have to accept it, you know. I cannot only take the, the good moments in, in my career as a team, as a player and say all the bad moments go away, you know. It, you have to accept it and um, you go on. But luckily we have another chance. We have another opportunity to prove that we are able to, to win this competition and um, we should take it... Uh, um, in that perspective, in my mind. Last two, please, guys. Sam? Hi, Kevin. Sam Lee from The Athletic. It's a similar question. In terms of the squad and how they were prepared for the last final, the first one you went to together, and this one now, does it feel any different? Does it feel the same? You know, it would be easy for us to say, oh, well, they learned from the last time, now they'll be better. But what does it feel like inside the squad? Um, I don't feel a lot of difference. Maybe... Um the difference now is that we had to play the the, the final last week was a different uh, prospect than we had two years ago where we had a long two weeks, I think, in preparation. So maybe that could be a good thing to play a full 90 minutes uh, in, a, in a cup game against United. But I, in my view, how I try to treat myself or prepare myself for a game, I don't want to do too many things too too different you know it's it's a more hectic week i would say with everything that goes on but for the rest i try to maintain as as normal as possible last question please guys yeah. congratulations kevin for reaching the final nico sati from live sport newspaper uh, i would like to ask you from physical option if i could say that uh, 
we all thought that uh, the beginning of the season last August, last September, when the group stages started, that uh, it's going to be a hard season with World Cup in the middle of it. Now you have uh, spent a lot of energy. You're the double winners, and uh, how how challenging and how you know how much energy left for you to to play this final June 10. I mean, it's too late for the season. Thank you. Well, I, th I think everybody will have enough energy for tomorrow. Um, wow, I would say um, from a physical standpoint, if you're fit, you can play the whole year long. I would say mentally is more more difficult than physically because if you are in a good shape, you can play every three, three four days. I would say mentally it's more tiring because you need sometimes the, the rest. Um, but... I don't see any issue in, in tomorrow, you know, if in, in that kind of occasion, the motivation will be there, the energy will be there from both sides. So, um, you know, I think after a final, maybe that can change because, you know, it's it's basically over the season and then um, you can have a drop off. But yeah, no questions in that regard uh, from my side. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Continue with the head coach shortly. <clears throat> 